But welcome, everyone. I'm Carl Etnayer. I'm the president of the, the Council of Hunger Mountain Co-op. That's what we call our board of directors for this organization. And I want to welcome everyone here. You know, the last couple days when people have greeted me and said, how are you? My, my go-to response has been despondent. And a number of people have you know, empathized with that, connected with that. And some people have said, oh, well, that's nice which you know, taught me that not everyone knows what despondent means, but uh, un unhappy, I think, is, is what I was trying to say. And many of us, I, I want to acknowledge, are thinking about how we can make a difference nationally. Even if we haven't quite figured that out yet, there's lots of opportunities to make a difference here at the local level. We can invest our time in local organizations like this one. We can reach out to immigrants in our communities and others who are feeling particularly vulnerable right now. We can spend our dollars someplace where they stay local in our community rather than going to billionaires like, like Jeff Bezos. And so I'm so glad to see so many people turn out today here and on Zoom who have been non-billionaire owners of Hunger Mountain Co-op. I think, I think we have non-billionaire owners here. Any, any billionaires in the room? Well, billionaires are welcome to, to invest too. You, on, you only get one share for, uh, and one vote as a billionaire member. So I want to thank the, the Food Services Department for the excellent food tonight. Yeah. And we already thanked 25 strings and they, they left, but for the record, let's thank them again, please. It's great music. And I want to thank the New School of Montpelier. Last time we were gathered here last year, I believe it was still owned by the Vermont College of Fine Arts. The New School of Montpelier has bought this building. And they are, I've just learned today, an employee-owned cooperative. So thank you, New School. And I want to thank Bonnie Hudspeth, who's returned to the task of facilitating our annual meeting here. Thank you, Bonnie. Well, hello everyone, and thank you, Carl. It's very cool to host a co-op annual meeting inside of another co-op. And that's the vision, right? Is that we can collectively own the infrastructure in our community and make decisions about it together. And, and when we, there's an unmet need, we can organize together to meet that need collectively. So it is a pleasure to be here this evening. Um, a little bit about myself. I use she, her pronouns. I grew up in Burlington, Vermont and I am living there right now. I'm also a member owner, like you all, of Hunger Mountain Co-op, and I started off as a peanut butter packer, um, unofficially at Onion River Co-op, City Market, back when they had working shares, right? And I went with my parents as a kid, and then I became the project manager of Monadnock Food Co-op to open, um, has anyone been to Monadnock Food Co-op yeah. in Keene, New Hampshire? Yep. So going through that process, I learned that there's much more to a co-op than the grocery store, right? Um, then I was able to work for an association of regional, of co-ops around the region, which you are a part of, Neighboring Food Co-op Association, for about a dozen years. And I also have the pleasure of serving on the board of Cooperative Fund of the Northeast um, that invests in cooperatives and redistributes wealth so that more people can start businesses that are traditionally excluded from that privilege. So if you cannot tell I'm a co-op nerd, I'm very happy to be here. And, you know, building off of what Carl was saying, this, in this moment, it really feels like a time to consider community, right, and what we can do. And that when, when we are in, what community looks like is bumping into each other in the aisles in the store. What community looks like is pulling each other, helping to pull each other out of the ditches in the winter and helping each other when farmers' fields are flooded from un unprecedented flooding, right? And thinking about how can we can make a difference with our neighbors and our friends and coming back to that purpose. So it feels like the timing for this annual meeting is important. So I think thinking about that we are more than a store, right? We are a movement of people and we are part of an international movement of cooperatives that come together around shared values and with the purpose of putting us, our needs, people over profit. And so what does that look like in this community? 
what, what can we celebrate? Over 50 years, right? Half a century of cooperation. Let's celebrate that. Raise your glass. <laughs> I also want to acknowledge and celebrate that we all have elect, brought forth a new general manager to lead the cooperative, Mary Mullally, who's right here. We also are celebrating this year many new local vendors, which we'll get to hear a little bit more about later this evening. Let's give some cheers to our farmers and producers. And also to the expansion of the Co-op Cares program and the Basics program, making the food at Hunger Mountain Co-op more accessible to more people in the community. That is hugely important right now. Yes. So yes, a collective cheers for all the progress that we've made together as member owners and staff and council and leaders and farmers, right, that are selling to the co-op. It's a big deal to celebrate. So thinking about participation tonight, we're, how many folks do we have on via Zoom, Jess? 47, 47 folks are at, in Zoom, Zoom land. Hi, everyone, online. Um, in order to make tonight's participation as seamless as possible for all of you, I just want to highlight a couple things. Um, for, so first, we want to know what's on your minds and hearts. That means for folks in the room, you have pieces of paper on the table where you can write questions, comments, things that you want to communicate to the co-op's leadership. For folks in Zoom, you have a chat, and you can ask questions by chatting to the host and co-host who are here. Um, and they, they can submit any questions you have to be answered during the Q&A. They're gonna hand it right over to me so I can get, make sure that you're able to do that. And if you are on Zoom, you can go, I want everyone to find out where your reactions are because we're gonna be using that later this evening to vote. You can click on the reactions pane and you'll see a little funky heart shape. If it's not, if you can't see it in your Zoom menu, just check under more and you should be able to see that. And so if everyone wants to practice, giving a thumbs up or raising, you know, raising your hand. Jess is gonna make sure you're raising your hand. Okay, let's see that. Oh, look at all those hands raising. Oh, a thumbs up too, whoop, whoop. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure that everyone can participate equally tonight. And it, just so, you know, we do have a limited time tonight. We wanna make sure we address all of your questions. If we run out of time to answer your questions, rest assured that we will be addressing them. We will follow up directly by email or post your questions and answer and with answers to them on the co-op's website. So we'll make sure that they get answered. And also Carl and Mary have also volunteered to stay half an hour after the program ends if you wanna talk to them directly. So there's lots of channels for communication tonight. And finally, members who pre-registered for tonight's meeting will automatically get enrolled in our raffle. And there's a lot of good prizes, I saw them. Um, and so we'll announce the winners at the end and hope you stick around with us. But if you do need to scoot out on early, no worries, we're gonna find you and make sure you get those prizes and we'll post the results online and contact the winners. And I wanna give a shout out to Orca Media. Everyone say hi to Finn in the back of the room. What's up, Finn? So he helped us with a number of technological things tonight so that everyone's able to see the screen. Um, thank you, Finn. And then thank you for recording the annual meeting tonight. You can watch it at, on Comcast Channel 1075 or by visiting Orca's website, orcamedia.net. We're also gonna make the recording available after at orcamedia.net and on YouTube. So people that missed the meeting or wanna refer back to tonight's delightful set, series of events can come back to that as well. I'd also like to welcome our council this evening. Um, Co-op council members, the el democratically elected leadership of the council that we are putting our trust in. Can you stand up and wave if you were in the room? All right, let's thank. Oh, the folks, oh, I see Eva raising her hand online. Are there other council members online? Thank you for folks that are participating online as well. Just want to give uh, appreciation to the council for your service to the cooperative. And, you know, 
Carl alluded to this a little bit, but we're dealing with a, kind of a new reality right now and just want to honor that. We could be having a variety of feelings in this moment, so to ge be gentle with each other and treat each other with grace and extend the grace. And I've already seen that a lot tonight through how we're interacting with each other. Um, in addition to that, we have some ground rules that will come, here we go. And they were, cre they were created and used by the council during their meetings. And a good, they're actually really helpful in any meeting, if you serve on any board or part of any organization, really helpful for thinking about how can we show up as our best selves in space together and treat each other with respect. Um, so the council ground rules that we're gonna use for how we share space tonight are to listen to understand, remain curious and assume good intent, only one person speaking at a time, listen to each other with respect and patience, to speak from our own experience, use I statements, share the air, and practice kindness and no personal attacks. Also speaking in headlines, trying to be succinct, doing our best, and don't worry about those perfect words. So want to appreciate the council for providing that group norm that we can use as we're in this space together this evening. Okay, let's look at the agenda for the rest of the time together. So in just a moment, we're going to shift to doing some employee celebration and recognition. We are going to learn more about the Hunger Mountain Cooperative Community Fund grants. We will then work to establish quorum and to approve the annual meeting minutes. There's a link right here. You can also find the minutes, a copy of the minutes printed on the table. We will then um, learn more about council elections and then we'll get to hear from Carl, our council president, and Mary, our general manager, and then have time for questions and comments. And then we'll wrap up with a couple closing details and raffles. Does that sound good? Great, all right. And right now I'm going to turn it over to Rockstar Community Relations and Marketing Manager, Rowan Sherwood. Hi, thanks again for being here. Um, part of my, my uh, piece here was to do some thank yous, but there's already been a lot of thank yous given to our food services department, to Orca, to uh, 25 Strings, um, additionally to all the vendors that donated the raffle prizes. So they're, like Bonnie said, there's a great list of prizes and all generously donated. Um, so we're thankful to that. And I want to particularly thank Jess and Heather for overcoming obstacles tonight, getting us uh, to where we are. It doesn't all need to be said, but you guys <laughs> totally rocked it. And, and Finn as well and the Orca crew for helping to solve the problems. We really do appreciate that. And that's, you know, that, that's what we do. That's what co-ops do, right? We solve problems and our staff are always solving problems for people. And so uh, next up is to celebrate our employees, our co-op employees, because they are always there. They are always going the extra mile, listening to customers, helping them in myriad ways. And we're so thankful for all of that. And we have a, a pretty good record of longevity at the co-op. And so um, Mary is going to recognize some of our long-term employees. Thanks, Rowan. Yes, I do want to. I do want to share some milestone anniversaries. But first, I just want to acknowledge staff as a whole. Everybody shows up on a daily basis, does a great job, and the co-op would not function without them. So let's give a round of applause for the entire staff. So we also have some milestones this year. So Jan Tobias, Jared Langevin, Stephanie Marat, and Paul Knight, 10 years at the co-op this year. Gabriella Zeichner, Jesse Guile, Carlin Pru, 15 years at the co-op this year. Woo! Yes. James Rosebush, Monica Race, and myself, uh, 20 years at the co-op this year. And Giles Brulé and Nancy McShane, 25 years. 
thank you to them and others who didn't want to share their name publicly for such dedication and commitment to the co-op. I can't thank them enough. So next up, we, speaking of celebrating our employees, we annually, our co-op staff, nominates and votes for a coworker who they believe has provided excellent internal and external customer service this year. So Mary Ann Angel, who is here in the back of the room. <laughs> received the award this year and, and so well deserved. You may have seen her, she works in the front end. She's been with us for two and a half years, or two plus years, and she's a cashier and supervisor in the front end. So thank you, Marianne, for going above and beyond. So another award we usually give out is the Hunger Mountain Cooperative Community Award. Although this year we did not receive any applications. So if you know of anyone who provides you know, excellent service in our community, does some really great work, please consider nominating them next year. And next, I... Um, Next, Matt Levin and Jen Poirier from our Hunger Mountain Cooperative Community Fund Committee will be uh, providing information about this year's grant fund recipients. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Mary. So uh, good evening, I'm Matt Levin. I'm honored to be a member of the Co-op's Community Fund Advisory Committee. <clears throat> the Hunger Mountain Co-op Community Fund was founded in 2005 to offer financial support to organizations, businesses, and initiatives that are aligned with our co-op's mission. <clears throat> over the past 20 years, we have given out over $100,000 in grants to about 90 recipients. These funds have provided critical support to projects that strengthen our communities, individuals, local food systems, and cooperative commerce. <clears throat> the Community Fund Advisory Committee is made up of member owners, council members, and staff. Our committee to makes grant recommendations to the council who has the final approval on awards. The criteria includes alignment with the co-op's mission, anticipated project impact, and the applicant's access to other resources. <clears throat> the fund is supported by donations from members and the co-op's operations. Thank you to all of you who have made donations to the fund. Uh, this year, the council elected to donate uncashed patronage refund uh, funds to the uh, to the fund as well, and altogether that meant that we were able to support projects that we know are making a real difference in our community. <clears throat> so we were very gratified to receive 18 applications this year, and we are happy to announce that we were able to award $13,350 in grants to eight deserving local organizations and businesses. Uh, some of the recipients, I understand, are here tonight, and uh, if they'd like to come up and join me if anyone is here from one of these organizations. So <clears throat> the grantees are listed, and I'll read them off. Um, the Barry Area Senior Center in Barry, $1,000 to help them purchase food storage materials and equipment. Bottomless Well in Corinth, $2,000 to support the purchase of a goat barn. Dawnland Farm in Barrie, $2,000 to purchase soil health equipment. Uh, Maple Mountain Homestead in Milton, $2,000 to support farm field fencing. Montpelier Feast Farm uh, here in Montpelier, $1,700 to purchase a rotary plow. Onion River Food Shelf in Montpelier, uh, $1,650 to support their vacation lunch bag program. Uh, the Plainfield Community Meal in Plainfield, $1,000 to purchase supplies for their weekly free meals, and the Randolph Area Food Shelf and Randolph, $2,000 to help them purchase a new freezer. So congratulations to the grantees. Thank you su for supporting the fund, and uh, we look forward to working with you over the next year to find more wonderful organizations, individuals, farms, and businesses in our community to support with our, uh, with our funds. Thanks so much. Great, thank you so much, Matt. Now it is time for business. A little bit of brief business together. Does everyone in person have you, do you have your yes or no cards? All right. First, 
Before we do anything, let's uh, make sure that we have quorum. So, we, do. we have quorum? Yeah, we have 80 in the room and 47 online. All right, well, we collectively need more than 100 people to make quorum, and it sounds like we have that tonight. Um, so we can move forward with figuring out how to vote. So, you, as I said before, there's a copy of the minutes on your table if you want to look at them in person. And then, Jess, can you post a copy in the chat as well? Or Heather? Thank you. So we are going to do two separate in favor and opposed votes taken. And um, online folks, you can vote by raising your hand in, reaction, in the reactions panel. And I think you practiced that before I saw a bunch of hands and thumbs up. So, but first, we need a motion. Can I have, can we have a motion and a second to approve the 2023 annual meeting minutes of Hunger Mountain Cooperative? Okay, I heard a move in a second. Would you like to state your name? Thank you, Scott Hess, for making a motion. Who was the second? What's that? Jeff Roberts seconded that motion. Thank you, Jeff. All right, now raise your hand and put your cards up for all of those. A motion is in order to approve the meeting minutes. All in favor, raise those yeses up. And on, oh, I see the online hands, awesome. Okay, you can put them down. That was really fun to see so many yeses. How about anyone opposed? No opposition. Was there? Opposition? One opposition, okay, cool. So it looks like the overwhelming majority has approved the 2023 annual meeting minutes of Hunger Mountain Co-op, and I'm excited to announce they're thus approved. So congrats, everyone. Great. And our next order of business is figuring out more information about the upcoming council elections and the candidates who are running. So I'm going to turn it back over to Rowan to share candidate information and also voting instructions. Yeah, so this year, um, as in all years, we are having a council election. Voting begins tonight um, here at the annual meeting. We do have ballots and a ballot box over on the table by the door. Um, they will also be available in the exit way of the store. Um, and online at Hunger Mountain Co-op Votes Dot com through 8 p.m. on November 26th. So that's our voting period from tonight through November 26th. Um, we have five candidates and six open seats. So you do the math. We, we <laughs> with the council, will need to appoint somebody. So we are also uh, embarking upon an appointment process. If you are interested in learning more about that, you can come see myself or Carl. He has some applications here tonight and they'll be available online starting early next week. Um, so that is the story. We will hear now, we have some video uh, from the council candidates that we will share tonight. Some of them are here, some of them are online. Unfortunately, some could not make it. But um, these videos are also available on the voting website. So you will be able to view them again uh, if you don't quite catch it all tonight or you wanna um, you know, just take it in a little more or learn more about the candidates. There are also full bios on the website. Um, so, are we ready to roll with the videos? Do, will, do I need to say anything about the Zoom? You, okay, okay, great. So, the Zoom people know that you, even if you can't hear it, you can access the videos uh, online. Okay, so here are our council candidates.
I'm Lauren Antler, and I'm looking forward to serving on the Co-op Council. I live in Montpelier with my husband and my daughter and our two dogs who have probably barked at you, and I apologize for that, and our cat who lives on top of the fridge. I also shop at the Co-op far too frequently. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to meeting you. Hi, I'm Giles Berlay, and I'm a candidate for council. I live in Marshfield with my family, and since 1999, I've been an employee of our co-op. Over the last 25 years, I've gained a wealth of experiences, skills, and understanding of what it takes an organization like ours to thrive. If elected to the council, I hope to support the council with understanding and reasonability so that it can get right to the work at hand and support our employees for the challenges that lay ahead. Thank you for your consideration. Good evening. My name is Stephen Farnham, currently the secretary of the Hunger Mountain Co-op Council, which means I also serve on the executive committee. In addition, I have served on nine other committees, including bylaws, communications, evaluations, rules, and value added. We face many challenges for which experience, creativity, innovative thinking, and careful planning will be key to the success of our cooperatively owned business. I look forward to serving you. Please feel free to be in touch if you have any questions or thoughts that you'd like to share. Thank you. I'm T. Graham. I'm running for co-op council because I'm inspired by the visions that co-ops can offer. I want to be a working class voice to ensure that that vision is accessible to every single member. I uh, first got involved in activism around the co-op and reform through um, the awful scandals involving Reese Winkle John last year. And Part of what inspires me to uh, run is to make sure that we really cleaned house and we're not allowing that kind of thing to happen again. Thanks. I'm Devorah Jonas and have lived in Montpelier and been a member of Hunger Mountain Co-op for four years. Co-ops can be a community of all interested parties, members, staff, vendors, and management that work together in open communication with one another to provide the best experience for all. I'm running for a seat on the council to pursue better listening and response from management and the council toward the other members of the community. Have any of our council candidates here in the room, if you'd like to stand up and or give a wave so folks know who you are, if they want to uh, connect and ask more questions after the presentation, feel free. I know they're all very open to questions and connections, so we encourage you to learn more. Um, okay, so I am now going to hand it over to Carl for more. Thank you, Rowan. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. I want to thank the outgoing council members, the people who have served uh, with us this year for longer or shorter periods of time and contributed to the conversation around the table that has kept the, the, the co-op uh, in progress and helped us with some of the uh, tasks that I'm going to tell you about shortly. So Eva Schechtman, Ashley Muscarella, and Tyler Strange are all rotating off the council now. Thank you. And now, Mary and I are going to do a joint presentation uh, sharing our annual reports. I'll start out with talking about the members of the co-op. We have 10,000 members in our area, and of these, 80% are likely to recommend the co-op to a friend or colleague. We're working on the other 20%. Uh, we have given out in the... All of this is for the past fiscal year, so fiscal year 2024, ending on June 30th of, of this year. Uh, we gave out uh, over $450,000 in member discounts. We have 161 participants in the Co-op CARES program. That's a 10% increase over the previous year, and that's a total of over $75,000 in discount. Co-op CARES is a program that provides 10% of a discount on purchases to members that are receiving public health benefits or who are working, sorry, public benefits, or who are working with approved community partners to uh, support affordable access to co-op products. And now, what have we done on the council? Well, 
the council year started in December of last year, and at that point, the previous council had already organized a search committee, and the search committee continued to, to get together and uh, organize with the help of the council an exemplary open and transparent nationwide search for a new general manager. We're only aware of one other co-op of any kind in the country that has done anything like the, the open and transparent search that, uh, that we conducted. So I want to thank all the people, all the members who participated in that search. And that search led to hiring a new general manager, as is often the case with these nationwide searches. It, Sometimes you end up at home, and, and we did. We found that the best fit for the job was a 20-year veteran of the store, Mary Malale, who started out as a cashier. <laughs> Mary had been serving as interim GM since, uh, since September of last year, so even though we just hired her as GM at the, uh, the end of June, uh, she really came through for us in a pinch, and we appreciate that. This is getting into the weeds a bit, but it's important for us on the council, committee restructuring. Uh, when the council year started last year uh, in December, we, we had no more committees. The committees had, had all expired, and uh, we decided to uh, stop this from happening to provide more readiness to incoming councils in the future by creating a number of standing committees, which are still in the process of being created, but at our next meeting on Tuesday, which you're all invited to come to, either virtually or in the community room. Uh, we will be chartering several of these uh, committees, and then one of the first things the new council can do is appoint members to these committees and set the priorities uh, for them for the year. Community resilience. We held a dinner and discussion with members about how the co-op can be part of the larger community work on increasing resilience. And talking to a crowd here in Montpelier, I don't think I need to say too much about why, th why that's important. Uh, there was a lot of focus, as you can imagine, at this discussion held in May on flood resilience. Participants also encouraged us to consider broader issues of helping to weave a stronger community and to increase support for marginalized communities. So we're, we're working with that. We, we heard a lot of, of uh, good information from our members and others in the, in the community. And then a candidate forum. Last year we had a, a contested election and uh, there were requests for a forum with the candidates so that members could get to know the people who were running better. At that time, staff didn't have the capacity to put the forum together, but we worked with staff this year to hold a forum on October 25th, and even though the election was uncontested, we had some three dozen people show up to hear uh, the candidates. It turned out to be a really good discussion about uh, the co-op priorities and how the council can work to help further those priorities. The video from that forum is online. You can look on YouTube or look for the link to, uh, to that in hungermountain.coop. Uh, so that's, that's something you can look at uh, as, you, as you get ready to vote. And remember, even though it's an uncontested election, the candidates with the most votes will get the three-year terms, the longest terms. So your vote does, does make a difference in uh, the composition of the council down the line. And, uh, and now? to talk about how we support local. I'll turn it over to Mary. Thanks, Carl. So yes, supporting local, it's a big focus for us as you probably are all aware. We had 61 new local vendors this year, which was great. Happy to be continuing to support the local economy, of course, for a total of 423 Vermont vendors. The co-op also purchased over nine and a half million dollars in goods and services from Vermont vendors and sold over $11 million in local products. That's 37% of our sales. So you are directly helping to support the local economy. <laughs> Sustainability is something we are always focused on at the co-op and you can see that we have reduced our CO2 emissions by 40 tons since 2020. We have um, in the past year remained a little bit flat there, and that is due to a decreased solar production, mainly due to cloud coverage, and also increased electrical and propane usage in our kitchen as we ramp up production. 
donations and sponsorships, we gave over gave away over 20 I'm oh, sorry, no, $85,000 in donations and sponsorships last year. And that's in addition to what we just gave away for the Hunger Mountain Cooperative Community Fund. Um, the, a majority of the donations and sponsorships went to help alleviate food insecurity in um, central Vermont. And your participation in the Give Change program at the co-op directly supports that also. So thank you for your help in, in that work as well. Co-op staff, we had just under 200 staff at the, begin, uh, at the end of our last fiscal year. 69% um, of those are member owners and 82% participate in our retirement plan. And you can see from that graph that speaks to the tenure of employees, just under half of our staff have worked at the co-op for five years or more. And finally, a quick financial report. So we did just under $30 million in gross sales last year. As I spoke to already, 37% of that is from local sales, 30% from organic sales, and 5% from other cooperatively made products. We have a patronage refund coming back to you of over $380,000. Also, our debt to equity ratios is, is quite solid for those that don't know. That is, um, for our industry, we're, we're in very good financial standing there. So to break that out a little bit, for every dollar that the co-op owns, we only owe 40 cents. Um, and we have total assets of over $12 million. So we are in a very sound financial position. Thank you all very much for helping to make that a reality for us. And we'll be talking more about what is coming next and hearing your thoughts on the future. So thank you to Carl for updating us about what the council's been doing um, and to Mary for the, the numbers, the numbers that are helping us to visualize the impact that we're having every time we go and shop at the co-op, right? And so it's really exciting when a co cooperative is in a strong financial position because as you know, Hunger Mountain Co-op is more than a store and we're mission-driven organization beyond meeting the needs of members, also meeting the needs of the community and the environment. So we're in this very exciting moment to think about, well, what do we do, right? Profit is not our bottom line. Meeting the needs of our, us and the community and making sure that we're caring for the place that we live is also a priority. So with that in mind, what is the future? What do we want the future to look like, both in our store, in our community, in our state? And how can we set ourselves up to be resilient for the future? To start getting all of, I mean, I'm sure all of you have ideas, and so please write them down on the comment cards. Write down questions that you have coming up. If you, if you think about, could the co-op do this? Is this a reality? The innovations that have happened over the last 50 years are because you, member owners, have kept the co-op nimble, right? And said, hey, there's a new need coming up in our community. Can we do anything? And usually the answer is, yeah, we can do something. We might not be able to solve the problem, but we can do something. So to help get our, our brainstorming juices flowing, I'm gonna turn it back over to Mary and to Carl to share some of the things that have been coming up and emerging from conversations with you all, and also through conversations that the council's been having and that Mary's been having with the staff and, and flowing up through the customer feedback. So I'm gonna turn it back over to them and as questions and ideas are coming up for you, please write them down so we make sure we can collect them. Thanks. Take it away, Mary. Thanks, Bonnie. So as our climate reality becomes clear, is apparent that resiliency is increasingly important. As we look to our future, how do we envision our co-op and how do we build our resilience to continue to be a resource for our community and achieve those future goals? Our first real taste of the changing climate was, of course, during the 2023 flood, as I'm sure I don't need to tell any of you about. Um, the co-op, as you know, was minimally impacted, thankfully, compared to others. And we realized we could use our place in the community to help. And we did. This allowed us to be a resource. We provided donations and coordinated donations from our vendors and collaborated with the Downtown Flood Relief Hub, the Rainbow Bridge, 
and the Vermont Food Bank to get these donations out into the community as quickly as possible. We also held a food drive for the Montpelier Pantry and promoted community-led farm fund campaigns on social media and the e-news. We were helping, but what more could we do? How could we better plan for future climate events? So we wanted to hear more from the community about this, and we held our annual dinner and discussion event with the theme of community resiliency. Thank you for anybody here who participated. Um, as you may know, there were many rich discussions that happened there, and it was great to see how many of our members care so much for our community. The, so the discussion began there um, with ideas how Hunger Mountain can contribute to community resiliency, but I want to hear from you and all of our membership. Um, what's next? What's our vision for the co-op? How do we support and build our own resiliency and provide that to our community as well? So as Bonnie mentioned before, I am hoping that you will share some thoughts on this for the Q&A. What thoughts do you have about our future, what our vision looks like, and resiliency for the co-op in our community? And I'm going to turn it over to Carl for more thoughts. Thank you. Well, to talk about the future, I think it's helpful to take a look at the past. And on the council, we're really committed to council development, learning how to become better stewards of the co-op, and that means going to courses, either online or in person. Uh, this is uh, three of us on the council right now, and then Giles in the upper left, who was uh, at that point and still is a shoe-in candidate for the new council, going last month to uh, New Hampshire, to Keene, New Hampshire, to Kaluminitz Cooperative Board Leadership 101 training. We'll talk about the Lego toys there in, in uh, just a minute. The four of us were the biggest contingent from any co-op that showed up for there. And there were also, at about the same time, there was a four-week online course in understanding financial statements. We had four of us participating in that, too. And I think that was also the biggest single co-op contingent. So we, we are all into learning how to be better council members on, on our council. The day concluded with us playing with Legos. The event organizers gave us 10 years of financial information about our co-op, and we were to use these yellow, green, and red Legos to symbolize our overall assets, our debts, and our equity. So this is going back to 2014 on the left, and on the right, it's 2023. So you can see that uh, working together, the four of us quickly used uh, the information on the spreadsheet to assemble some Legos. And we created this 3D chart showing how much we've grown in the previous 10 years. Uh, and uh, also what a small uh, ratio, what a small proportion of our total assets are these red Legos uh, which represent debt right now. What that tells us is we are in a good financial condition as it has been mentioned previously to get into some new opportunities. So quickly communicating basic information about the co-op in means like this is helpful as we look forward to the years ahead. Now, uh, what what's guiding our vision right now? Well, the last time we did an exercise trying to envision our co-op's future was in 2011. It was completed in 2012, and it ended up with a 10-year a plan, Vision 2022. So that was a couple years ago that that ended. Well, why did we not renew it at the time? Well, there was a little something called COVID going on, and uh, the co-op had a lot to work on uh, dealing with that. And then uh, last year was pretty busy with other issues as well. So right now, in 2024, as 2025 is fast approaching, it's a pretty good time to look at, um, at the future. But it's, it's helpful to see where uh, they were thinking back 10, over 10 years ago that we would be in 2022. Uh, this is a quote from it. As you walk into Hunger Mountain Co-op in 2022, you can tell that we are a key player in the local food system and the organic, sustainable, and fair trade movements. This is apparent through our activities and collaboration with other co-ops and community partners. Everywhere you look, evidence of this springs off store shelves, displays, and produce bins to show that we are a valued and fair partner with our member owners, employees, farmers, suppliers, shoppers, and communities which sounds like a pretty good description of the co-op this year. They had five main goals for 2022. 
And those were build and maintain a strong business and excellent workplace. We have done that and of course continue to build on it. Secure additional outlets as feasible to accomplish our mission. We have not done that and are quickly reaching capacity in our current space. Share information, engage and educate members about food, health and our cooperative model. That is something that took a little bit of a backseat during COVID, but we are working to ramp it back up again with many different projects, getting out in the community more with more community events, get our demo program going again, lots of social media work. Um, and build, co collaborate to build local ownership and control of food economy and create social and economic benefits for the community. You saw our focus on local and our increased, um, uh, sorry, uh, new local vendors and then also the focus on the Hunger Mountain Cooperative Community Fund and improve environmental sustainability of our operations. That is an ongoing for us and you've seen the progress, progress we've already made and we will continue to make more. So what priorities lie ahead for the council? Well, that's a discussion for all of us to have formally as a council and, and maybe even take some votes on. But as you can imagine, I've been talking to council members and others about uh, this issue for a while now. And here are some priorities that I've distilled from those conversations. The ENDS policies, those are the, the policies that guide our manager in running the store. Uh, those are the, the highest level of goals and aspirations that we have written down for us as a co-op. Uh, those could be revisited with an idea of weaving community resilience into them. And as part of that conversation, uh, how do you measure whether you've achieved any of these ENDS policies? So we'll be talking about, if, if we do this, what does community resilience look like on the ground? How, how do you measure whether you're getting close to it or, or increasing it more? Uh, to renew this 2012 document, the vision and plan, uh, that was a uh, year-long plus process, I believe, that involved lots of conversations with individuals and with groups of people. So really engaging membership in, and vendors in uh, trying to understand where people want to take the co-op in the future. And to support our new general manager in uh, her work, including a reset on staff morale. Our big project as a co-op council this last year was finding a general manager. And now that we have her in place, we want to help her succeed. So with that, I believe we're going to uh, back to Bonnie. Just saying, I'll just conclude by saying that community input is crucial for renewing the vision and plan and for all our conversations about the future. So uh, we welcome your attendance at the council meetings and also any of the other meetings that we organize in the future to envision the future of the co-op. Thank you to Carl and Mary for helping to get our juices flowing on envisioning what, what do we want our shared future to look like. And um, we're now going to address questions and comments. If you have a question that you have written down on a piece of paper, raise your hand and Rowan is gonna come collect them and add them to the questions and comments box. I've also received questions that Jess wrote down from online chat that I will be asking. And um, as, as we said before, Mary and Carl have also agreed to stay after if you wanna have a conversation with them and get more in depth with your ideas. So I'm going to be directing all operational questions to Mary and all governance or council related questions to Carl. And um, it looks like we're running, we're, we're, get, we're very efficient tonight. So we've got some good time for questions. So I'll take the first question. There is an obvious answer to inadequate storage. Oh, this might be a comment. There's an obvious answer to inadequate storage space, to inadequate cold storage, to inadequate parking for members and employees, and that is this. Hunger Mountain Co-op should acquire the vacant lot land next to the co-op. This once in a lifetime opportunity will never come again. We should not miss it. From Paul. Thanks, Paul. Um, Mary, what do you got to say about that? Well, I can say that we are exploring and that is the extent of what I can say at this point. Okay, it's being considered. 
what plans are being made to reduce the use of single-use plastic? For instance, grab and go. Did anyone else have that question? Yes, clapping. It is not a co-op annual meeting without a question about how can we reduce plastics or our waste, right? Yes, so that is, that's true, Bonnie. That's a regular question and one that is, that is a constant struggle. Um, so I appreciate that for sure. And yes, the, was that based on the grab and go? That is a, where a lot of our plastic comes from, certainly. And I was just at a convention that was showing some alternatives for plastic packaging, specifically for grab and go that we're looking into. Um, but there are always other options as well, eating from the hot bar. Um, there is a... Um, container that you can get to reuse. So if you're looking to cut down on your plastic, you can go to the hot bar, fill it up, take it home, bring it back, we'll swap it out for another one, and that way you're cutting down on, on immediate use of plastic. I'm open to other suggestions too. If people have other possibilities that you've seen that work really well in other places, let me know and know that we are continuing to, to dive into that question as well. Great, thank you. How many employees are or have experienced food or housing insecurity while employed at the co-op? I'm not aware of the answer to that question. Sorry, and I, and I honestly, I'm not sure that I would be able to share that kind of information publicly anyway, um, but thank you for asking. I hope the co-op will provide even more support for local vendors by having a smaller margin of profits for local products than for distant ones. Thanks for that point. We do definitely um, try to offset our margins for our local vendors with, um, with increasing our mar margins for you know, product that we are getting from, from outside of Vermont. So that is certainly happening, and we have a, as, as you've seen, we have quite a commitment to our local vendors and um, fostering more um, growth for them as well. Carl, sorry, you're not getting any governance questions. You all know how the co-op governance goes, I guess. Um, in what ways can Hunger Mountain Co-op be a catalyst, mover, shaker, or otherwise command a leadership role to help reduce carbon emissions in the co-op's community. There's also follow-ups to that, but I'll let you start with that. <laughs> Thanks, Bonnie. I actually think that this comment is more appropriate for our um, recently restarted Sustainability and Resiliency Committee. Um, I think that that has a broader focus that can maybe um, help think about it outside of just the co-op and more community-wide. So I will definitely be bringing this to the committee. We can respond online with a more in-depth answer from, from the group. Great. There's some additional questions that this person asked, and I'll get back to them if we have more time. At last year's annual meeting, questions were asked. We were told that answers would be posted later on the website. Where can we find these answers on the website? Is that a Rowan question? Yeah, the mic. Um, they are posted as a blog on our website, so under the news um, section. I, I don't remember exactly what it was titled, but we we did do that, and they are there. So if you poke around, if, if whoever asked that question would like to come see me, I can poke around for you and send you a link to it. Perhaps in our answers to the questions from this year, like the sustainability question that will uh, be answered in more depth, we could post a link to last year's questions and answers. The co-op is in a very strong financial position. In what ways can the co-op leverage its position to build more cooperative enterprise in the community, for example, co-op housing? Sorry, I'm like walking directly up to you. I can pause here while you think for a minute. Mary, solve all the problems, please. Oh, Carl, Carl wants to talk about that. 
I mean, th this is the sort of question that we'll be addressing when we renew our 10-year plan for the co-op. What, what are the current priorities in the community? The heart of being a co-op is that you are cooperatively owned by, in our cases, the members, in some case of some other co-ops, the employees. And beyond that, you don't have to just sell groceries. Uh, I go a couple times a week to the co-ops in the Lebanon, New Hampshire area, and they've got a garage, a, a car repair shop and filling station right there. Uh, and they've got uh, little kiosks in the hospital, I understand. So they've got a range of businesses. Uh, we went, a uh, bunch of us went to the CCMA, it's called. It's an acronym that nobody remembers what it stands for anymore, but it's an annual gathering of people in grocery store co-ops. And uh, we heard about a co-op in Massachusetts that decided that it wanted to invest in cooperatively owned daycare, or whether they wanted to invest in daycare care, partly for their own employees, so their own employees could have a, a place for their children uh, to be, but also for the good of the community. And they were exploring various options, one of which would be a co-op owned daycare center, another would be subsidizing daycare places uh, in existing facilities for uh, their employees. So there, are, and housing has been mentioned, there, there are a lot of different opportunities out there and I think uh, we need to look at whether we want to continue to be a grocery store and concentrate on our strength that we've built up over 52 years in the grocery business or whether we think now's the time to explore other business projects as well. Mary, did you want to add something to that? Oh, here's a Carl question. Will the council make an effort to increase communication between members and council? For instance, providing more time at council meetings for community comments and answering immediately. The council meetings are an opportunity for us to get together usually once a month for our regular meetings. We have a very limited time to do a lot of work, which is why we have for some years now limited uh, the amount of time for member comments uh, during that. Just uh, we have council members let me back up. We start at 5.30 once a month on a second Tuesday. We have council members who turn into pumpkins at 8 o'clock. Uh, so we need to uh, take very good care of that time and, and use it efficiently. Uh, so expanding the amount of time for conversation with member owners there uh, could work against us working effectively as a council. We can certainly talk about it. We've already changed the, the order of um, community comments in response to uh, interest from people in the community. We used to have five minutes at the beginning and five minutes at the end, and earlier this year, people said, you know, we'd like to have just 10 minutes at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, so we are responsive. Uh, one of the things that some of us have talked about is having regular sessions, uh, say, in the cafe, where you could come and have coffee or the beverage of, of your choice that's legally allowed to be served at the co-op uh, in the cafe with, with council members and, and just have informal conversations. I think something like that would probably go a lot longer, a lot further to having more dialogue with the council than trying to expand the comment time in the meeting. Thanks, Carl. Um, why would the co-op consider buying land next door when it floods? <laughs> Who wants to take it? Anyone? I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question. I, um, that is certainly a consideration for any piece of property that the co-op would consider purchasing. It's always, you know, you have to do your due diligence when you're considering any kind of real estate purchase. One of our active members uh, has a house in, in Moortown, and if you've gone through Moortown recently, you could not miss this single family house that's been jacked up probably 20 feet up into the air. Uh, and they're building a concrete garage underneath because they got tired of being flooded out there. So they did not want to leave a vulnerable piece of property uh, because they liked the location so much. So they're doing what they think is needed to be able to stay there. So you know, when, as, as Mary said, when, whenever the co-op um, would uh, consider any sort of purchase, then we would be doing due diligence and 
our current situation and floodwaters are certainly something that we would take a look at. Thank you. There are many products in the co-op that have high sodium content, what, which for older folks like me, can, must be care, we must be careful with. So my question is, can the buyers find products that have less sodium? I'm thinking in particular of the fabulous ethnic foodstuffs, sauces, condiments, and pre prepared prepackaged foods in the deli section and in the inventory of broths and bone broth. Thank you. Thank you for that question. I will certainly pass it along to our buyers with a request to look for more low sodium offerings. And thank you very much for putting specific requests in there that we can ask them to look into. This is not a co-op answer per se, but I just want to talk about what the co-op can control. And I talked earlier about making a difference locally versus trying to work uh, to make a difference nationally. Last summer, I had the privilege of meeting a man from, I forget the name of the organization exactly, but it was a Norwegian government agency responsible for uh, health and food, amongst other things. And he told me about a years-long project that they had in the government of Norway to reduce the amount of sodium in the food that was sold in Norway. That had been so successful that when he left Norway, I, I met him in Iceland, and when he left Norway, he could immediately taste the difference in the food. So that's something that the co-ops, perhaps working at a national level together, uh, could work on. Or, I mean, I have a neighbor who works internationally to reduce people's exposure to, to mercury. Maybe one or two people could set up a shop to do that with sodium here in this country. Thanks. Would the co-op consider, at some point, a canning or pickling facility? This would help local farmers and maybe even folks who have large gardens save food for bad weather. I love that idea. I think um, I do think that that question is is great for when we're considering our visioning process. What does the co-op look like next? What does the membership want? How do we want to be in our next evolution? So I would I would encourage that whoever shared that, please please bring that again when we start our visioning process. Great. Oh, another question. I was just going to make a call. If any more questions, if you have any more questions, raise your hand and Rowan will come get it. Or for our co-op friends online, if you want to put it in the chat, we've got a couple more coming forward, I think. It's hard not to notice Field Day brand products are taking up shelf space and being featured. I understand Field Day is owned by UNFI. This seems contrary to the co-op supporting small business. Why and who made the decision to carry Field Day? Well, that's a good question. Thanks for asking it. So in addition to being asked to focus on local, we're also asked to, for, to focus on affordability and, making, and make the co-op more accessible for, for many people. And that is how we are doing it. We are bringing in brands that can, um, that can offer everyday low pricing that is comparable with you know, going to your other grocery stores around here. And we want to show everybody that our, the price perception that is out there is not necessarily true. You can shop at the co-op and get the very similar pricing for, for everyday items. And, and purchasing field day is one of the ways that we offer that for folks. Will the council consider adding time before the meeting, for instance, 5 p.m., for a question and answer with members regarding council meetings and community comments? So I tell council members uh, every month that I plan to be in the community room at 5 o'clock with food from the hot bar, and I invite uh, all of them to join me so we can have we can break bread together and have conversations, and uh, member owners are, are welcome to come up during that time, too. That's an informal time when we get together, and, and you're welcome to be there. The, the Zoom meeting uh, version, that doesn't start until 5.30. Great. Thank you. Um, are those questions?
Will the council and GM consider monthly informal meetings with community members? Collectively speak into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay. That's a yes. Okay. Why won't the co-op research and label items from Israel? Well, that is a very divisive topic and one that um, there's no winning answer to, and we are not trying to take a side in any way in this situation, and that is why. We don't want to, you know, choose one side over the other. We are here for everybody, and that is how we operate. What else you got, Bonnie? There is a fabulous idea here. Alone or with other co-ops, um, could there be a prize for the company that reduces plastic with their products? Co-op competition. There, are, How many co-ops are there in Vermont? 13 alone? Uh, or in, in our region alone? And do you know how many co food co-ops there are nationally, Mary? I, it's 200 plus. I don't Over 200 food co-ops nationally. So that sounds like a great idea for that collective buying power of co-ops coming together, we could pass that on to the National Co-op Grocers Association. Great idea. Were there any more questions? In the annual meeting exit survey, oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> I was a little too close. In the annual meeting exit survey, there's, I, I believe, a misprint where we're, where both, both ends are disagreeing. So just, I wanted to suggest that everybody should check their sheets and see if they properly understood the directions which are confusing. So that um, the, the, <laughs> the people in charge don't, see a lot of negativity because of of this um, misprint. Yes, th th thank you for bringing it to our attention. Do not read the instructions on the exit survey. <laughs> if you just look at, at each of the questions, it has strongly disagree on the left and strongly agree on the right. Please follow the written instructions next to each individual questions and not the instructions at the top. Yes. Um, there's a question here about when will the EV charger be repaired? <laughs> yes, true co-op question right there. I love this. Um, so this is a great opportunity for me to share with you the struggles we've been through actually with this charger. So we have replaced that charger three times in the past year. And that is because people continue to run over the cord and damage it. So until we can come up with, and we have, I've had some really great suggestions from Stephen Farnham actually about a different style um, charger which basically uh, has the cord retract up and away from the car. That is what we're looking at replacing it with. Um, so it's, it's coming, it's on our to-do list and something we are focusing on in the very near future. Thank you. Um, a follow-up to that earlier question about field day. There was an, a desire for clarification about who actually made the decision to carry field day in the co-op. Well, I don't know, that predates me. <laughs> Um, I would imagine it's a collective decision on our part. There are many, it's rare that any one decision in the co-op is made by one person. Um, so I would imagine that, I don't know, the promotions team, the grocery team had a discussion about how to increase our, um, improve our affordability and increase our accessibility and that's an option that was chosen. It's part of the co-op basics program, you're saying, Rowan? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it's subscribing to that program in the uh, spirit of, you know, 
Okay. Yeah. I'm handing the mic to Rowan to describe the larger program. So the co-op basics program is, it's not just field day, but it does consist of a lot of field day products. And it's, it's the affordability initiative of uh, national co-op grocers. So it's, uh, you know, they work really hard to make these products available at er everyday low prices uh, to make the co-op more accessible to more people. So I don't know who made the initial decision. I know that we've carried the products for a long time and I know, I'm not, exactly sure how old the co-op basics program is. Um, I don't know that, like Mary said, I don't know that there's one person to pin it on. I think it's, you know, a, an ongoing collective decision-making process that um, takes a lot of things into account, including accessibility to a wider swath of our community. So I'd just like to point out that there is an ongoing national conversation amongst startup grocery co-ops and established co-ops about how, uh, what food model to use. You know, we started out as a buying club for people who wanted to get food that they couldn't get in ordinary grocery stores. Now other grocery stores stock organic food. Uh, I think we're probably better at stocking local food than any other grocery store in, in the area, but I don't have, have hard data to, to prove that. But take City Market, which is a very successful co-op. Uh, Onion River Cooperative City Market in Burlington, when they moved into their downtown location, then part of the condition was that they stock food that you could find at any conventional store to make it friendly to people who were used to that type of food, who wanted that type of food. Uh, the the co-ops down in Lebanon, New Hampshire, in that area, uh, that co-op food store does the same thing. At the CCMA conference, the annual conference that I, I mentioned earlier this evening, uh, we had a whole opening talk uh, with four or five people working in uh, food disadvantaged communities. Food deserts was, was the old name for it. I forget the, the, the new name for it, but uh, places that didn't have much of an alternative. Co-ops, locally owned grocery stores, community owned grocery stores were coming in to fill needs there and part of the perceived needs were Pop-Tarts and Cap'n Crunch. They put them on their shelves because that's what people wanted and people felt that was affordable. So it's a range of choices that people make in co-ops and trying to reach diverse parts of the community. Thank you. Um, I'm down to the last comment. If there's any other comments or questions, raise your hand and Rowan can get them. Um, this is a, I don't have a question per se, but I would like to acknowledge all of the amazing work Mary has been doing since fully coming into the GM role. She brings not only a wealth of experience and institutional knowledge, but a warm and open heart. I know she faces some challenges, but I am confident that she will accomplish all that she sets out to do. That you should get them to write you a letter of recommendation, Mary. <laughs> or letter. <laughs> okay, it looks like, oh. Okay, it seems like we've got a couple more. Is there someone in charge of monitoring toxins in co-op food? I have just more, more than plastic that needs. Educate consumers and companies. Canola oil is deadly. Seed oil is not good. Olive oil, yes. So I guess, the, I, am, I, am I understanding this correctly that the, the question is around monitoring toxins in co-op food. Is anyone doing that? Well, we have buying policies about specific items that we won't carry, product that has, you know, various products in them because we, we don't want to sell that to our customers. Um, so to that extent, yes. I think I'll look at this question again and think about it a little bit more in relation to what was stated there as far as, I don't, I don't believe those items that were listed are included in that list, obviously. Great. Um, this is a comment. Someone needs to educate the kitchen as to the dangers of aluminum foil. There is no excuse for this, as it is a number one toxic substance when something heated, maybe, goes into your brain and bloodstreams. 
Thanks for that comment. I'll pass it along to the kitchen. This is a Carl question. Will the council consider giving council members freedom of speech, not just for the council president? Yes, council members have complete freedom of speech as long as they abide by the rules of not undermining the council and the co-op. We, we operate as a whole, we support our decisions, and it's our job as fiduciaries of the organization. That means that we have legal responsibility for the organization to support the organization, not to undermine it. What's wrong with the water filter? It has a very restricted stream of water. <laughs> I am so tempted to give this one to our new facilities manager. <laughs> um, I will ask him to take a look at that tomorrow. I'm not sure if the, I think the filter was just changed. So we will take a look at it. Great. Um, oh, did you? Were you the person that ran out of paper? This is very quick, but since things have gotten to almost microscopic level of detail, I'm gonna put this in. The telephone system, and I don't mean the engineering, but I mean the way it's programmed, the actual results of a phone inquiry, it was designed by the Marquis de Sade on steroids. It, I, it took me six phone calls to even to find out about this meeting. And if I wanted to find out something important as to whether you had, you know, condensed bee sweat, forget it. If you're going to have a phone listed available to the public, have some a living human being answer it and not kick people from extension to extension, you know, to Old Whalen, to the Vatican, to the Kremlin. The phone system sucks. Comment noted and very creative use of language. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Bonnie. And thank you to everybody to, who contributed to those, those questions and comments. It's about time to wrap up our meeting. Thanks to everyone here who stayed through the end. Uh, if you read the e-newsletter, you know how I like to, to wrap things up. You know, in, in the times that I alluded to at the beginning of, of this meeting, you might expect someone at the end to say, you know, go out there and make, make a lot of noise. But you know, sometimes just peace and quiet is important as well. And so I was very touched and taken by the bumper sticker I saw on a car in the parking lot recently. Uh, the bumper sticker said, if you like mimes, pretend to honk. <laughs> Words to live by. If you have any additional questions, please email them to info at hungermountain.coop. Also, Mary and I will stick around for half an hour to talk to anyone who wants to talk more, and I will talk to you with all the freedom of speech and constraints on speech that any other council member has. Thank you for coming. Oh, uh, we need to, we got a turkey order? Oh, raffle winners, where, okay, raffle winners. Mary and Carl, M uh, Mary reads the first column. Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> Okay, Northwood Apiary's five and a half pound raw honey jars. Winners, Barbara Dahl, Julie Henderson, Haley Karklau, and Kendra Mills. Fever tree mix, mixer cases. Winners, Merritt Young, Teresa Ouellette, Linda Benoit, Andrea Mills, Renee Carpenter. Fever tree mixer gift box. Winners, Steve Kolk. $100 REI gift cards. Winner, Michelle Carter, Amelie Boucher, Jamie Young, Amanda Warren, Alma Green, Mega Food Super Mushroom Bundle. David Lahr, and Mega Food Vitamin Bundle, Paul Carnahan. And other winter winners include Linda, Edward, Kim, C. Susie, Francis, and Nona. You will be contacted if you are not here right now. Please fill out the exit survey. Remember, do not follow the directions at the top. Uh, Allison is over there collecting them as you go out. And uh, it's now a motion to adjourn is now in order. Uh, m m uh, made by Larry, seconded by, by Scott Hess. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 We have adjourned by consensus. Thanks so much. <laughs>